Hello Year 6, I hope that you're safe and well and that you had a great day yesterday. Did you enjoy finding out who the mass readers were? Did you guess them? Could you work out which one I was? Could you work out any of them? Oh, we're going to do all the answers on Monday. So um, it's very exciting to see how you got on. <laughs> I hope you had lots of fun. Right, so it is Friday and you know it's my favourite day of the week. This week for lots of reasons, okay? So we've got a fantastic day full of learning and you're going to have so much fun with what we're doing today. I'm so excited for you. And it's our last day before you all come back to school on Monday. Yay! We're gonna see each other on Monday and we're all going to be together again. I am so excited to see you all. I cannot wait. And I know it's been a long time since some of you have been in school. Please don't worry about a thing. It'll just be like it was when we returned to school in the autumn term. We'll all be together and if there is anything worrying you or if there is anything at all, all you have got to do is speak to me and I'm here for you, okay? So please don't worry. I've got some fantastic things that we are doing next week to settle in back to school. So I promise you, we are going to have lots of fun and it's just such a blessing that we can be together again. I really can't wait to see you year six, okay? So what have we got to do? You've got to work as well today though. I'm not going to let you off. <laughs> so we have got skills check as always on a Friday. So um, year six objective. So just do your best. Like I said last week, we are working our way through all of those objectives. Now we've just finished our topic of decimal. So you should be super fantastic at that. So just have a go and do your best at what you can do. Okay, sorry my my screen just went a bit funny. So just have a look, do your best. The answers are there to help you if you need them or to mark your work. As I said last week as well, just want to see you getting a little bit better each week, a little bit more progress as we go through the weeks. That's what we want to see. We don't want full marks. It doesn't matter if you don't get full marks. It's just doing your best. And I know that you all do that so, so well. Right, so there is your maths. Now, as you know, we have been focusing on Tuesday all week. Well, we have saved the best lesson till last. You are going to use the supported speech that you used yesterday for um, the police report, but you're also going to use a little bit of direct speech. That is because, yes, six, today I would like you to write a newspaper report on what happened on Tuesday night. Oh, it's so fun. Okay, so first of all, we have got a success criteria for you to work with, the same as it is in school, okay guys? So that, you know we use a success criteria and I say, right, you've got to include all of these things in the newspaper report. So these are your guidelines, okay? so. A headline that attracts attention and may play with language a little bit. Can you remember, we say, grab your attention with that headline, okay? The reader has got to read a little bit more. I want to read it. So you've really got to grab my attention with your headline, okay? Now, we practiced our first paragraphs, didn't we, um, last week, saying who, what, where, yeah, and when. All right, so that first um, paragraph, who, what, where, and when, okay? Answer those questions in that first paragraph. And remember, it's going to be past tense, okay? And I want that formal language used as well, okay? Um, details such as names of people and places given in full. Remember, the reader doesn't know everything that you know that you're writing, so you have got to explain everything clearly. Don't worry, I'm going to show you an example. Okay, um, some opinions to be included, um, possibly disguised as fact, so you could say what somebody's opinion is, but that could also be a fact. Okay, um, Two interviews, eyewitnesses or experts. So remember, 
yesterday when we were talking about the police report and you interviewed people and you reported on what they said that's what you could do but in this case year six you could do it as direct speech so you could use those inverted commas but remember those skills guys remember a capital letter inside for the first word of those inverted commas all of your punctuation in those inverted commas as well so remember those key points it's really important that you get that right <coughs> excuse me so um, where have we got reported speech used correctly as well so remember the past tense the third person formal language okay and a final paragraph that brings the reader up to the present future so what is being done about it now what are those detectives doing about those flying frogs okay remember that last page where it showed a flying pig are you going to include that in it have a think okay and um i've put here because we need to include the right grammar i want some modal verbs and I want semicolons used correctly. Now, we have used modal verbs before and we have used semicolons before. But on the PowerPoint year six, I've just put a quick reminder of what modal verbs are. Remember, we said that they are verbs of possibility. I could have, should, would, will, might. There's a little sheet to help you there, okay, guys? So have a look at that as well because I want you you it's going to be really good with the frogs isn't it i might have seen a frog on a lily pad mm, did you okay and then a semicolon okay we've really got to get these into our writing so a semicolon when do we use a semicolon can you remember we spoke about it before we went into lockdown you have two independent clauses you have two main clauses and so instead of putting and in them you link it with a with a semicolon, all right? So, so you have got two main clauses, two independent clauses, two standalone sentences. They're all the same things, okay? Which are closely related to each other, and they can stand on their own as sentences, okay? And you are going to link them, and there's an example there as well. So have a look at that on the presentation. Now, <laughs> I have done an example. Example. <laughs> this is my example, okay, so I think you might find it quite funny, all right? So, what we saw was hovering hogs, so pigs, we'll get moving on to pigs, we're not using um, the frogs, I decided to focus on the pigs, shock the village of Hagley, all right? So, these hovering hogs shock the village of Hagley, and you can see that I've put a picture of the um, um, hovering hogs, and um, it's by myself because I am the chief reporter, all right? There might be some names that you recognise in there of witness accounts. I know for definite that you will recognise Farmer Pennicut. <laughs> Sorry, Mr Pennicut. <laughs> I haven't checked, but it's okay with him. Oops. <laughs> and then we've got somebody, Miss R. Robertson. I wonder who that is. And can you believe it? She's got a dog called Archie that woke her up when it heard the news. <laughs> and um, Mrs. Hickman makes a bit of a... <laughs> She comes into it as well. She makes an appearance as well. So have a read of my example of these pigs over Hagley, okay? And um, enjoy what I've written. But I want you, yeah, to do um, the newspaper report, yeah? We are reporting, okay? So we have to remember that it's going to be formal language, okay? And while you are reporting what people say, it's in third person, unless you want to change it to direct speech, and you have to remember the correct punctuation for that. And keep on checking that success criteria. Make sure you've included a modal verb. Make sure that you've included um, a semicolon, all right? Has that first paragraph got who, what, where, when? 
I always forget that one, when. <laughs> but it's really important, isn't it? When did it happen? It's really important in a newspaper report to um, report that. Okay, so have lots and lots of fun there. If you want to plan it first, I always, always recommend you planning it first because it's going to make it an awful lot easier for you to write. Okay, and I think that the quality is so much better once you've planned it. So if you've got time, I'd love it if you could plan it first, but that you don't have to, it's up to you. Use those dictionaries, use those thesauruses, use that fantastic language that you've got. Think about your punctuation, think about your paragraphs. It's really important in a newspaper report. Have so much fun and I can't wait for you to tell me about what you wrote or show me when you come into school on Monday. Okay, brilliant. This afternoon, oh, you're going to love it. You're going, I keep on saying that, but it's true. So we've got humanities. So we are still learning about the amazing Americas, okay? And what we are doing today is we are looking um, at... America is such a big country. So across America, countries have very different climates, okay, and time zones. It's huge, okay. So um, we are looking at lo longitude and latitude because there's countries that are in different longitude and latitude and climates as well. So the first thing I want you to read carefully all of the information about that in the lesson presentation. And then what I'd like you to do, there's a word search sheet. I know that you love word searches, so I thought I'd put that in. And you are allowed to do it first because it's got key vocabulary in there and it's really important that first of all before anything else you learn your vocabulary okay for this lesson and then guys we I want you to do this sheet where you are going to compare two different Ge geographical locations and characteristics of two countries in America. So here we have got, we have got Anchorage in Alaska and then we have got Rio de Janeiro. Two very different countries that are in the Americas and what I'd like you to do is to fill in this table comparing, doing the comparisons so looking at the saying what state or country, the capital city, the coordinates, and that is explained to you on the letter presentation, how to work that out, and the hemisphere they are in, the size, natural features, the time zone, and, and the type of weather. Because it's really important, we know that in certain parts of Great Britain, there is a different climate. We know that it's more likely to snow in different places. However, in Americas, in the Americas, it is completely, completely different. And I think you'll find this really interesting. Now, it is tricky if you haven't got the information. Have a look on the internet. You can find it out on the internet. Or if you've got an atlas, use the lesson presentation to help you. I've also included the answers in there. So don't worry if you can't find everything out. But it's really important that you read it because it is really, really interesting, okay? So enjoy doing that. Right, and now, because it's Friday, the last lesson of the week, I think you deserve a treat because you have worked so incredibly hard this week and it's going to be linked with World Book Day and you are going to love it because you are also creative and you are also brilliant and um, get the family involved. It's a whole school um, topic as well. So get a sibling involved, get your parents involved, they are going to love it too. So you have got a choice of tasks, okay? And um, because it's based around Tuesday, we are going to be looking at frogs. <laughs> So, the tasks involved today are about frogs, okay, and you have got five um, tasks to do. So you can choose whatever, if you want to do all of them, do all of them, if you want to do one of them, do one of them, if you want to do whatever you want to, okay. So, we've going to, got the first task is a frog bookmark, to make a frog bookmark. The second um, um, activity is how to draw a frog, there's a link for you to follow. 
absolutely brilliant. So you can have a go at that and you can follow that link. When I do that, I pause it so I can catch up with my drawing. So have a go at that. Um, make a frog puppet. Again, there's a link for that to help you through that process. They are absolutely brilliant. Um, make a jumping frog. I'm going to do that with Isabel and George this weekend. We're going to make um, jumping frogs. I love the look of that. And when I showed them this, they really wanted to have a go at it as well. And um, the final one is to design a mask of any animal. Okay, so have a look at those. And there's all links on there to help you do it as well. So... I told you it's a brilliant day for lots of different reasons. I really hope you love your learning today and have such a wonderful time, all right? There's a lot, so don't worry if you don't get all the way through it. That doesn't matter. Just do your best because year six, you are absolutely brilliant. I could not be prouder as a teacher of you guys. I think you are wonderful. You really are brilliant. I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for working so hard during lockdown. I know it has been really hard. It's been really hard for everyone, for you guys, for your parents, for us teachers as well, for everybody. It hasn't been the easiest time <clears throat> and you have done absolutely superbly and I appreciate it so, so much. Like I said, I cannot wait to see you on Monday. Please don't worry about a thing because we'll all be together again, okay? And we are going to have a fantastic time. We've got an exciting new book that we're going to work on in English and you will love it, all right? So have a great day. Have a wonderful weekend. Get lots of rest so that you're ready for learning on Monday. <laughs> and um, I will see you then. Okay. Take care, my darlings. All right. Lots of love. Bye-bye.